What's good, YouTube? This your boy Chi World back to y'all again with another Adobe Illustrator tutorial. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and hit that like button, comment, subscribe. Make sure you hit post notifications so you will be notified every time your boy drop the heat. Without further ado, let's jump right into this video. In today's video, I will be turning a customer of mine into a boondocks character we're gonna be doing it together step by step so you can follow along and see what your boy doing if you want to be creative and turn yourself into a character so let's let's get into it let's go ahead and pick our size of paper that we drawing on i like to draw on 18 by 18 or 8 by 8 really 18 by 18 because you get to fit more detail in it But the reason I do even numbers because it fit perfectly when I'm posting it inside of Instagram and stuff like that It, it, it fit in there perfectly. So let's do 18 by 18 inches First thing I do every time I'm starting on a new piece I pick a bright bright pinkish color and I drop the opacity down at least somewhere in between so I can do like a rough sketch and make a blueprint of the artwork before I get started on the line work now we're gonna set our brush and this only work if you have a digital tablet you know one of them art tablets like a wacom or a bamboo i'm using a ug tablet i'm gonna let y'all see it if y'all want to wonder what i'll be drawing on it be this little i'm drawing right here and i got my tv display right there but i'm drawing on this so and it come with a little pen so i draw right on the string you know what i'm saying yeah okay you gotta have a pen if you want to be able to set up your pressure sensitivity you gotta have one of these little tablet setups what you want to do is you want to come over here to new brush then you want to click ok then you want to come down here to the bottom and go to pressure and then we can make both of these numbers even so we're going to do three on each side and then what that's going to do is give you this this little effect with your brush where you can draw light the lighter you go the thinner your line will be the harder you press down the more thicker it'll be let's delete all that so first thing we're going to do we're going to start out with the sketch i'm looking at a reference on my other stream and what i do is I get the original picture of the person I'm drawing and then I go find the cartoon character so I can know what style I'm going for but at the same time try to make it look similar to the actual person I'm drawing so what we gonna do we're gonna work on this face first before we go to the body and one thing about this you can and when you start on the face you can shrink it down to size to fit in the body so we can draw it big it don't matter what size we start with we're gonna start out making it pretty big and if we got to shrink it down we just select everything and just bring it down to scale Anytime you're working on a picture, you just want you want to start out with the sketch and make sure you're just having fun with it. Don't be. I notice when a, when I see a lot of people sketching, they do this. It's like they committing to lines, like they move so slow. But why you want to move that slow when you're not for sure you're going to keep? That's not your final. Only time you want to take that much time is when you're working on your line work, like the final draft. But when you're working on a sketch, you want to be as fluent as possible because you're not for sure you're going to keep it. You're not for sure you want to keep the lines or you're not. So when I'm working on a sketch, I like to just I, I just like to go with the flow because I, I want to hurry up and see where 
I'm going with it or what it's going to look like or should I keep going with it or should I just erase this? So make sure when you're sketching, be fluent, but don't commit to something. You can spend as long as you want until you're happy with your sketch before you move to your official line work. So on this part, I can just have fun and I can just really scope out the picture. Okay. Now what I like to do, I think I like that face we're gonna Got the detail of the face. Let's break it down some. Make it a little thinner. We're gonna fit the rest of the body in. Scale it down a little more so we can fit it all. And if you want to scale it down, but not like distort anything where it's going too thin or too wide, if you want to keep the same size you got, all you got to do is hold shift and alt and grab the edges and pull it in and it'll keep it same like proportion. So let's do that. So if you want to change, just say not, we don't want, if you don't want to change the size of the whole picture and you just want to grab a portion of it, all you got to do is bring that little box over just as much that you want to change and we can alter that without messing with too much of the, the picture. Okay. Now that we got our sketch, we got our sketch out the way, it's time to go in. Now this is the part you wanna take your time on. You wanna take your time on the line work. Now with this part, this is just our blueprint. You know what I'm saying? Like what we gonna follow to make our clean lines. But what we gonna do is we gonna lock this layer, create a new layer right above it. I'm gonna select the color black. Then we're gonna drop the size of our brush down. We're gonna zoom in. We're gonna start. We're gonna start with the eyes. Okay. Oh, gotta bring our opacity back up. And if you wanna change the smoothness of your brush, like if you want it to help you make the lines. All you got to do is double click the brush and it'll pull up this chart. And then the farther you move it up, the more it'll help you make corrections of the lines. And the, the more you move it down, it's the more control you will have over your lines. So I normally move it between these two. You know what I'm saying? So I can still have some control, but really get a lot of help making them perfect clean lines, you know what I'm saying? So, let's start with the eyes. And now that we got our eye, what you wanna do, let's say, let's change the size of it a little bit. And we're gonna hold Alt on your keyboard. Then you wanna select this and drag it over and let it go. So we can make a copy. While it's still selected, you wanna right click on your mouse, go to transform, and then you wanna go to reflect. So we can have the same eyes going. So we're gonna alter it a little bit.
Okay, now that we got the line work finished, it's time to do the coloring process. So I'm going to do this slow and step by step, and I hope I don't lose you and maybe you'll get the hang of it. Because when I first tried this technique, it took me a few times to get it because I couldn't get it right at first, but I kept on trying it until I got it. So I'm pretty sure if you do the same thing, you'll finally figure it out and be like, oh, Dang, that was simple. But let's go ahead and get it started. So the first thing you want to do before you start the process, you want to check and make sure all your lines is closed off because the uh, process worked like the paint bucket. You know what I'm saying? So you got to make sure your lines closed off so your colors won't be spilling out. You feel me? Let's see. I'm going through making sure I got my lines closed off. Okay, now, what you want to do is you want to come right here to your selection tool. You want to highlight everything. Once you got everything selected, you want to go to Object, Expand Appearance, and then you want to go to your Pathfinder and click Merge. So now what we just did, we made all our lines one big line one big line one single line so when you when you go into it you see it, it's like everything is together now so after you do that you want to drag your line work down to this blank sheet of paper and drop it to make a copy of it lock the top layer come to the second layer right here and then you want to pick a Pick a, a color to start with. Let's see. I'm gonna go ahead and I like to go ahead and pick the skin tone that I'm gonna use. Okay. I think that's a good one. Click OK. Come to your rectangle tool and you wanna drag it over the whole picture. Okay. Now, what we finna do right now, we finna right click this color. And then we're going to go to arrange and send to back. And you will know if you did that step correctly. If you come over here and look at your layers, you'll see that your line work is on top of the color now. So after you do that step, what you want to do, you want to come to your selection tool and you want to highlight everything once again, the color and the line work together. You want to highlight it all. And now we finna merge this together and we finna make this one. So click merge. After you do that, you wanna left click, wait, click off of it real quick so we can deselect it. Then you wanna, you wanna uh, left click onto it and then right click and go to isolate select group. So now we can click the areas that's closed off individually and change a color or delete so what we're gonna do we're gonna go ahead and delete all this on the outside what we don't want so just click it click an area and hit delete on your keyboard okay go ahead and color his shoes Find a nice color for his pants. Okay. Color his shirt. I'm gonna just get the dropper tool and select the color I use for the shoes to make his tank top. Okay. Now let's go in and let's color his hair. We'll make it a dark brown. My drop a tool and select this color. We'll color his eyes. Watch. I'm gonna 
gonna do, I'm just select these little areas by holding shift after I click it. Now you wanna hold shift and you just wanna keep selecting. So we can color all this at the same time. Come over here and get my dropper tool and use that color for the watch. I'm gonna make the face a great color. I'm happy with the with the base color. Now it's time to go in with our shadow layer. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna lock this layer. Come down here to this blank sheet of paper create new layer in between and the reason we put our line we, we save a copy of our line work and put it on top so whenever we're coloring let's just say we was coloring it'll fall right under the line work for when we're doing shading so we we ain't got to worry about trying to be so perfect where you're trying to stay along the edges and it's going over top of your line work. So that's what I like to do. I like to ma always make a copy of your line work and stick it at the top and lock it. So let's go ahead and start on the, start on the shadows of the skin. Get our dropper tool, select the skin and now we're gonna pick just a, we're gonna find a good shade. Okay, I think that's pretty. I, I think that, that's good to start out with. Okay, what we're gonna do? Notice on these boondocks characters, they got these little shadows under the nose. And then they got one under the chin. I mean, under the lip, under the bottom lip. Okay, one thing we're gonna do, we're gonna create a layer on the top just to do the little glare in the eye. All you gotta do is come put a little put a little white dot right there. And we can lock that layer, we're done. So we're gonna come back in the in-between layer. Make sure we finished up all our, our shading. And there you have it, you guys, how to turn yourself into a Boondocks character. You know what I'm saying? Make sure you stay prayed up. Mohi coming soon. And I'm out this day.